weapons were found. The Fire Chief Garrison of Reno, Nevada is warning residents to be very aware and very vigilant in response to a recent rise in fires caused by so-called smart meters. The new electric meters send energy use data electronically to electric companies, reducing the need for an in-person meter read. Of the nine fires in the area that appear to be linked to smart meters, one resulted in death. Nevada Electric reports over 70 consumed meters, meaning the cover is melted or breached and soot can be present. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, at 500 East Fenway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com The Liberty Beat. Activists with the Detroit Water Brigade are calling on Detroit citizens to join in the Occupy the Bankruptcy campaign to fight the controversial water shutoffs taking place in the city. The plan calls for a meeting Monday at 8.30 in the morning on the steps of the federal courthouse for a speak-out with families facing water shutoffs. The group is demanding that U.S. Judge Stephen Rhodes immediately stop the shutoff program and create an income-based water affordability plan. Former drone intelligence analyst Heather Linebaugh has begun speaking out in support of alternative treatment methods for post-traumatic stress disorder for veterans. I use yoga a lot. I practice transcendental meditation, and I was actually part of a case study that studying the effects of relaxation massage on people with PTSD and actually studied my sleep patterns when I was able to sleep longer after I got massaged and my mood patterns, like how my mood was while I was in the program getting massage regularly. I used medicinal marijuana for quite some time to sleep at night. Linebaugh served in the United States Air Force from 2009 until March of 2012 as an imagery analyst and geospatial analyst for the drone program during the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan. A new study suggests that veterans dealing with PTSD may benefit from breathing-based meditation treatment. Researchers with the University of Wisconsin-Madison published the study in the Journal of Traumatic Stress. Chartered psychologist Dr. Kate Sparks with the British Psychological Society said the study showed how breathing is... The new Netflix gas lets users instantly inhale multiple seasons of TV shows. An area man is worried the nation's healthcare debate might be getting political, and a bullied eighth grader incorrectly thought classmates would leave him alone during a field trip to the 9-11 memorial. Don't mistake my kind, gentle tone for one of love or support. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to a report released this Tuesday, no one, absolutely no one, will ever stack up to your eighth grade boyfriend, Brian Bowden, who you dated for six weeks in middle school. A 43-page study from Stanford University confirmed that no other guy in your life will ever be as kind or caring as the 13-year-old who held your hand during the scary parts of Jurassic Park, who had that really cool chain wallet, and who bought you two pink carnations on Valentine's Day. The report added that while your current boyfriend does have a lot going for him, he will certainly never cut class with you to listen to the dead Kennedy's Frankenchrist on a Sony Discman. Brian used to do that with you. He used to do it all the time. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free. Bring up anything. Here, the number is 855-450-FREE. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you. We give them away. Those other talk show hosts, they charge you for their websites. Ours is free, so please go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. You can get interactive there by submitting content to our site other listeners can then vote it up or vote it down and you can vote on things as well so go and enjoy at freetalklive.com well last night and the night before that uh heavy topic in fact last night it was almost the entire show we talked about secession uh inevitably i mean the the hosts of free talk live tend to be heavily in favor of secession as an idea as a concept something that uh, we want to see more of around the world and I feel like I'm I'm safe in saying we on this one, Daryl. Uh, you would agree with that, right? 
Certainly. And I support secession so much that, Ian, if the state of New Hampshire were to ever secede from the federal government, I think that you should be able to secede from the state of New Hampshire. Yes. And anybody renting, you know, from you could, you know, theoretically try to, you know, not be part of your secession in whatever way you guys could work that out. Yeah. The more secession, the better. The more decentralization, the better. Unfortunately, it looks like, at least if you believe that the polls weren't ta- uh, tampered with now, in I, Scotland. I've seen stories that, you know, there's vote fraud allegations. Oh, I, I saw a picture online last night where somebody was able to take a picture of stacks of ballots mm-hmm. and the table set had a big sign that said no. And some of the ballots that were on top of the stacks had been clearly marked yes. Oh, my. So there is going to be, you know, some kind of uh, investigation into whether or not there was vote fraud in Scotland. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to result in. I mean, obviously, the people who are in power have a serious interest in keeping that power. And I imagine that no matter what the investigation turns up, it'll, it'll be all said and done for at least this time around. Uh, but what will it take? I don't know what the process is in Scotland for them to come uh, to, to, to put this up again for another vote. Because just for listeners that don't know, if you're just tuning into the show for the first time, uh, Scotland, the, the voters there, high, very high voter turnout, 85, 90 percent in some of their uh, turn precincts generally across the board from what I've seen. I, I, uh, I think I read that the average turnout was 84.4 yeah, percent overall. That sounds right. So lots of people coming out to vote on this issue of should Scotland leave the United Kingdom? And it had been something that has been in the works for quite a long time. Three years. You could also uh, say hundreds of years as well. Right. I guess, well, but yes. When, when, when I say three years, the uh, referendum was approved uh, okay. by British Parliament three years ago. That's interesting. I didn't know it had to go through Parliament to, to get approved. Yes. Huh. It had to go through Parliament. And Alex Salmond, who's the leader of the Scottish Nationalist Party, had actually at the time, three years ago, requested that more autonomy be one of the options instead of just instead you know, of total secession, total secession or nope, we're staying. Hmm. He requested you know some sort of autonomous sort of territorial status type thing. British Parliament shot that down. And within the last couple of months, really within the last four weeks, the British Parliament had been telling the people of Scotland, if you vote no, we'll give you more autonomy. (laughs) And Alex Salmond kept pointing out, hey, wait a second. I requested that be an option on the ballot three years ago, and you said no. Wow. So I think a lot of people sort of decided to vote no well they're going to give us more autonomy if we vote no and that's what we really wanted all along so i i I think a lot of people speculative they, they, they bought the bribe of we'll have a little bit more freedom instead of you know no longer you know bowing to the queen Hmm. I, that's a speculation on your part, obviously. Pure speculation. You've seen some sort of poll about that. I, I've read several polls. I've read a lot of. I've I've been reading a lot of British news about the Scottish secession vote, and several of the people that were interviewed in a lot of these articles had said, you know, like I was leaning in favor of voting for, and now that they're saying that we're going to get more autonomy. I'm leaning towards voting no. So I do have some numbers uh, from a post-referendum Scotland poll. Ooh. They looked at or they talked to over 2,000 adults who did vote in the referendum. They were interviewed either online or via telephone. Uh, online was over 800 of the uh, the respondents. Telephone 1,200 of them on the 18th and 19th of September. And it came out with some interesting uh, results. The final tally, I actually, uh, let's see, it looks like it was 55% voting no. Actually, this was in the poll. This was in the poll, not the actual results. Do you happen to have that handy? I believe it was 54.5%, almost 55%. So the exit poll was correct. We had talked last night about what the the lone exit poll 
I think it was the YouGov poll that uh, they were doing. It, it showed 54, approximately 54 percent voting for no, voting no, we're going to stay in the United Kingdom. But things get interesting when you start breaking down the ages. 55.3 percent was the final number as reported by the UK Guardian. So things get very interesting when you uh, you break down by age range. Uh, looks like people over the age of 65 take a wild guess at what they voted. They voted to remain kneelers. They sure did. In fact, 73% of those over the age of 65 uh, voted to stay in the United Kingdom. Uh, with only 27% voting to leave the UK, which you'd think that older folks would know just how bad uh, the United Kingdom was for Scotland. Right, but they're so old, they don't want change. Yeah, it's true. You know, they're so used to using the pound, and the Brits told them, you know, if you guys leave, you can't use the pound anymore. Oh, I don't want to have to change my money because I've always used this with the queen oh, on whatever it. whatever will we do? Now, what, what I would love to see in one of these sort of referendums is anyone voting for independence should no longer be you know, deemed a subject or citizen of mm. the country that they are wanting independence from. That'd be awesome. That'd and be like- only the people that vote in favor of remaining part of the country are then still considered citizens of the country that they want to belong to. Well, that'd be awesome. That would be essentially a vote of personal secession. Right. So then the 44.7% of people that voted yes for independence Mm -hmm. would no longer be British subjects. Uh, According to the age breakdown, after you go back from 65 years, so you go to the 55 to 64 range, 43% voted yes in that case. So still a a, a good portion of the uh, 55 to 64 folks voted no, 57% voted no, they wanted to stay in the union. But then once you go uh, earlier in the age range, uh, 45 to 54, 52% voted yes. uh, 35 to 44, 53% voted yes. 25 to 34, 59% of 25 to 34 year olds voted yes they wanted to leave then there's the only 48 percent in 18 to 24 voted yes and again you know how many people they actually interviewed of the 2000 adults who were 18 to 24 i don't know uh but then 16 to 17 apparently you can vote at age 16 and 17 in scotland this was the first time that they let people under the age of 18 vote in scotland interesting well turns out this is a big number here 16 to 17 year olds 71 percent voted yes to leave the United Kingdom with only 29% of 16 and 17 year olds voting no. So if you chop off the 65 plus numbers and chop off the 55 plus, you would have had likely a yes vote. You would likely have had secession in Scotland. And then the largest city of Scotland, Glasgow, voted 53.5% yes. Hmm. With a turnout of 75%. So I hope this isn't over yet. I hope this comes back again because the more times they can put this up, the more people can become aware of it, the more discussion can happen, the more old people can die off. 855 450 free. You take control here. Share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation, easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877 882 That's 877 882 Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. 
Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, September 17th, 2014, gold opened at 1237.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1282.97, 641.48 for a half ounce, or 320.74 for a quarter ounce. That's 1282.97, 641.48, and 320.74. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll free 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Daryl. Don't forget, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. Also, another great website, libertystickers.com. If you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty, you can do it from your bumper sticker, or your bumper, rather, with a bunch of stickers, or just one one really good one, because there are a lot of really good ones to choose from over at libertystickers.com. You can reach thousands of people uh, per month if you drive a lot with libertystickers.com. Check out their vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. Plus, they'll actually do printing for you, too. If you've got a great idea for a bumper sticker, you can have it done. That's where we did our uh, LRN.FM and Free Talk Live stickers, and they look great. Libertystickers.com. Uh, as we continue here, we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind right now. Scottish independence happens to be on our minds still. Turns out it didn't quite play out the way the yes voters had hoped it would. It was a close race with 55% voting no, uh, that they wanted to stay in the United Kingdom. Uh, apparently, there's actually uh, somebody tagged me in something on Facebook. Eddie Free actually tagged me in something on Facebook where uh, apparently some hooligans, some racist skinheads are out in the streets making a, a big 
lot of noise over in Scotland right now. And apparently trying to incite the pro-independence crowd into violence. Into fighting, yeah. Um, and so they're just a nasty group. Apparently the skinheads in Scotland are in favor of the Union. So if right. you if you want to side with the uh, racist skinheads, uh, you would be in favor of keeping the United Kingdom together. And one thing that I think is interesting, looking at the election results of the 32 districts in Scotland... Only four of them went yes. Huh. That's not a lot. That's not a lot, but it just shows you how close the election results were mm-hmm. in all of the districts to where it's still, you know, forty basically forty five to fifty five percent. And only four of the districts were yes. As we pointed out earlier as well, younger people more likely to people under the age of fifty five more likely to vote. Uh, yes, let's leave. In fact, really young people, 16 to 17, 71% of them voting yes. Uh, so again, give it another 20 years, give it another 10 years, and you may see that this will become a success. We're going to your calls and thoughts. We've got Mark. He's on the line in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hey, Mark, you're on the air. Yeah, well, my thing is, okay, if they voted yes, it would just be like you describing. They voted yes, but it didn't matter because... They got invaded by Russia anyway, so would Britain do the same thing? I always wonder, because this is all part of this European Union, which is really a, a magulous, you know, just group that you don't really know what they're going to do one day to the next. I mean, they think that they have control over the people, but once the people show that they have control, all of a sudden they're like, no, nope, we got to show the people we have control. I'm not really sure what you're getting at. Like it works in Europe. I'm a little well, confused. My, my, what I'm getting at is the fact that, you know, Yugoslavia voted to be independent away from Russia. That's what they did. Now, you think that if Scotland were to do that, Britain would have just let them go and they would have been nice? No, they would have been all about stopping the banking unions and they would have stopped about all kinds of other things, the NATO and all the rest, try to make as hard a decision that they made even harder well i think that you would probably see i think you would probably see some political movements on the part of the uh on the part of uh, britain but i don't think that you'd see them bringing in troops or anything like that especially since it was the british parliament that authorized this referendum Mm -hmm. in the first place so it, it would make absolutely no sense for british parliament to authorize a referendum, and then order the military to go invade the area that they just okay. allowed to then secede. We, as the United States government, are going to recognize these people's independence votes, but not the independent vote in Ukraine? Um, I would recognize, recognize, recognize anybody who votes. this one and not that one? I would vote. I would because recognize. we don't seem to be recognizing the other one in Ukraine. I recognize anybody who wants to be independent. I don't know. I mean, I'm not part of the government. Well, the so. government doesn't seem to recognize the independence vote in Ukraine. Right, what because the Russians are doing there. Because it's not politically beneficial for the U.S. government oh, to recognize conflict. the you know South Ossetia and Transnistria and Abkhazia and all of these other separatist movements that have some level of autonomy. I don't think that the U.S. government supported Scotland leaving either, if I'm recalling correctly. They did not. We don't know. What are are the separatist units that wanted to be part of Britain in Scotland? And in, in, you know, what what were the groups there? Otherwise, they got a big voice, obviously, because you say how many units or how many country counties or whatever— voted for and how many voted against, it seems overwhelmingly that most of the people in the rural areas, just like it is, uh, I'm in Utah, we all just feel like the left coast or the right coast controls us in the middle. So what are you going to do about it? We, we can't. We just have to survive. You know, 95% of the land in the state of Utah is controlled by the federal government. Mm. So what do we got? We got nothing, really. You guys don't have a secession it movement out there? Bundy was fighting his head again, man. You, you guys don't have a secession movement in Utah? No. That's too bad. You, you ought no. to start one. Well, there are individuals.
individuals and groups that are starting to look that way. But for the most part, there is a overwhelming religious group that just has a majority, and we just kind of have to go along with that unless, well, I, I like to stick my toe in the big hole. So, hey. <laughs> Thanks. Mark, I appreciate your call tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm not sure what he meant by that, but me kind of either. confusing in general. Let's go to Jay. He's in Colorado. Jay Noon is with us. Hello, Jay. Actually in Kingsburg, Colorado, believe it or not. All right. And uh, anyways, I was listening to a radio station out here. I'm going to change the subject a little bit. Um, and they were talking about, they got a really good AM free, uh, AM liberty-oriented uh, radio station out here. I actually emailed them the other night, uh, told them about Free Talk Live and giving your contact information. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so anyways, uh, they had this show on called uh, Free America or something like that, or to Free America, and they were talking about 501c3 corporations and how these churches um, are literally, you know, being controlled by the IRS. And the uh, 501c3, uh, there was um, a thing called the Johnson... Um, act uh, named after Senator Johnson, who then became a president. And anyways, what it was is it prohibited 501c3 corporations. And I'm not sure if this is specific to a church, but they were just saying 501c3s from having a political like speech. And then the Free State Project, from what I understand, is now a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Mm-hmm. I guess the, the question to ponder, I'm not expecting you guys to answer it, but the listeners is, you know, what's this going to do for, obviously, everything is political. Well, I think that the Free State Project has a way around that, but also you bring up a larger question of uh, the churches and that the, the free church movements we're talking about. Summertime is safe big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've uh, got a little bit more on secession. Last night I was talking about the poll uh, that came out in 2013, which was, as of yesterday, the most recent poll about secession. Now there's a more recent poll about secession in the United States, and we'll give you some of those numbers here in a little bit. The toll-free number, again, is 855-450-FREE, and I want to tell you about MyMagicMud.com. Daryl, have you used the MyMagicMud yet? I have. have? I I use it a couple times a week. Are you happy with it? I am. I like it. I use it also a couple of times a week. It's a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria that causes cavities. Gives you a dentist clean every time you use it and is gentle on the enamel. Plus, the ingredients in My Magic Mud are also used as dietary supplements. So, not only is it an effective whitener, but it's safe to swallow. And, Daryl, you put that to the test. I did, and it did not turn the poo black. No, it didn't. That was a surprise. But I, I, I remembered the day after that charcoal, which is one of the ingredients, That's correct, is a diuretic. Ah. So if you swallow it, be careful how much you swallow. Meaning you might have to go pee afterwards? Uh, other outlet, but... Okay, uh, okay. gotcha. So yeah, you can swallow it, but you may, you know, may want to spit it out. Uh, magic, my magic mud is a teeth whitening pow- uh, powder that strengthens your teeth and promotes healthy gums, reverses sensitivity, and soothes any pain you might be dealing with. It was created by Jessica Armon, a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three, and you can go get your jar at mymagicmud.com. This stuff lasts too, by the way. It's yes, uh, one jar. Of this is expected to have 150 uses. Mymagicmud.com. Plus, you can listen to an interview with biological dentist. Dr. Griffin Cole, where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. So go and check it out, uh, mymagicmud.com. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. We've got Jay Noon on the line calling from Colorado, of all places. Normally he's in Massachusetts. Uh, Jay, you're out there and you were listening to a discussion on some other radio show about 501c3, this IRS tax designation that uh, many companies, or not companies, but uh, charities and, and churches seek Uh, In the case of the Free State Project, they have recently been given this 501c3 designation. And your concern is that that will somehow prevent them from taking political positions. Is that right, Jay? Well, I'm not worried about that. My concern is that they engage in this, you know, multi-page contract with the IRS now. Um, And, you know... Um, from what I am understanding, this Johnson Act is one of these would maybe be one of these contractual caveats that they're not supposed to be engaging in 
you know, uh, political discussion. Well, the good news uh, is the Free State Project doesn't do that. Uh, and, and anytime you bring up, hey, why don't you Free Staters do this and this? Uh, well, then the Free State Project's answer is always, well, the Free State Project doesn't do any of those things. They don't take positions on issues. They don't advocate. They don't do any advocacy on uh, on issues one way or another. All they do, all the purpose of the Free State Project is to basically advertise the idea of liberty loving people moving to new hampshire so i've pulled up i've pulled up some information about 501c3 okay uh any nonprofit that fits one or more of the following a community chest a fund a cooperating association or foundation organized and operated for religious charitable scientific testing for public safety literary or edu- or educational purposes can qualify as 501c3. Now, all 501c3 entities are prohibited from directly supporting or I- opposing political any specific political candidate. Mm-hmm. They can do some level of lobbying, but that cannot be the bulk of their Mm. expenses i don't think you're going to see the free state project do either of those things any lobbying or supporting of political candidates you know a a, uh 501c3 as i am understanding this they can put out literature that mentions a topic and takes a position they Mm. just can't do it in a manner that supports or opposes any specific candidates you follow that, Jay? I do, I do. And another thing these guys were talking about, which, you know, would uh, apply with the Shire Free Church and the Church of the Sword, is um, they were talking about that churches are automatically exempt from all this taxation. And they were, they were getting into this a little bit on the show. And uh, they, they were talking about, um, you know, 501c3 is not necessary. And, but, what is happening with a lot of these churches is they're they're now being threatened that if they don't preach certain things, um, that they're going to lose their 501c3 status. And what the uh, what the guy on the radio was really getting to, you know, so who who is the church serving? You know, God or or the or state money or the IRS? Uh, yeah, no, it's a real concern, and there's a whole movement out there in the world of uh, churches called the free church movement. Uh, there are churches who are trying to un. uh, untether themselves from the IRS because what you say is correct, at least based on my research. And Daryl, you and I were involved in doing some of this research. Right, and I've been doing some research on this for several years, and I'm actually the one that pointed you in some of the direction. The Free Church. Um, so yeah, when we were looking at forming the Shire Free Church here in uh, in New Hampshire, that uh, that was something that that was really interesting to me was that uh, it's true you don't need 501c3 status to accept donations that are tax deductible from people, but that's what every lawyer will tell a church. Right. Uh, so if a church, you know, if the church wants to take do- donations from people and they want them to be tax deductible, there's this idea out there that they have to be 501c3. That's false. It's just right. not. It's just not true from my understanding of the IRS rules. And we've actually read the IRS regulate, or at least I have. Yep. I've read IRS publications, and they plainly say any of these entities are automatically tax-exempt right. and are not required to file for 501c3 status. So all 501- However, you know, doing so gives you this certification that then allows banks to do something. And- I don't think it does anything for a church. I think that it hurts churches because, as you're pointing out, of course. Jay— uh, it results in them being controlled. It results in the IRS being able to tell a pastor, for instance, you can't endorse a political candidate. So if uh, if a, a church pastor feels very strongly about politics and wants to get up on this, is sort of the classic example of how 501c3 has, has resulted in churches being controlled, is they'll go after pastors who make a statement publicly about their beliefs and what they think their uh, their parishioners or whoever should vote for. That's a violation of the rules of the 501c3. But had they not only. If 
Only if the preacher does it from behind the, the pulpit. pulpit. If he steps out from behind the pulpit well, and says, I'm speaking to you as John Smith, not as Pastor John Smith. Uh, I see he can saying. say whatever he wants to. Right. So not just behind the pulpit, but if it were published in like the church newsletter or something like right. that. Right. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's a bad thing. And Jay, thanks for bringing that to the forefront tonight. appreciate that. It's, a, it's definitely something that I think a lot of people who are in churches should be concerned with because essentially what happens is the church they form the, they they form their church and they're all under this impression this mistaken impression that they have to have 501c3 or else no one will be able to tax deduct their donations to the church it's not true that's what the lawyers will tell you that's cuz the lawyer wants to charge you 5 grand or 10 grand or whatever the hell they charge right. to hold your hand through the 501c3 application and process and then just filing the application to the IRS is somewhere between Four and eight hundred dollars. It took, I think, two and a half years for the Free State Project to make theirs work. And they right. finally have just recently gotten it. Now, with the Free State Project, they may need to do it because they're not a church. You know, they're uh, some sort of advocacy group or right. whatever. And I, I'm actually surprised that they did not go for 501c4. What's the difference? Uh, C4 allows for a little bit more leeway and flexibility in being able to take positions on things. Mm, okay. So, for instance, Downsize DC, which is an organization that I know you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. uh, I believe they do some level of advertising on the Liberty Radio Network. They have both a 501c3 and a 501c4. So the C4 has a little extra leeway in lobbying right. and advocacy, whereas the 501C3 is specifically for educational. So there you go. If uh, if you can you can form a church and you can accept donations from people, as I understand it, and those can be tax deductible even without a 501C3. So no reason to do that. More coming up. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Bellawood Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning, solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. 
Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. And please do enjoy the features that are waiting for you there on the site. We give them away. ProXPN, by the way, is our sponsor of the phone lines here. And if you value your online privacy, you really need to look at ProXPN. And in fact, it'll cost you nothing to check it out. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. That's where you can download their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Plus, Linux users can use ProXPN as well. Those setup's a little different. It's pretty easy to get it rolling with Linux. You get connected to ProXPN, and then your internet is encrypted. Uh, that means your internet service provider will be passing encrypted data onto ProXPN servers, so your ISP will no longer be privy to what you're doing with their internet connection. And that means they can't log what you're doing. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit and every search term you enter, in some cases, for as long as five years. They're keeping those logs. You can stop that by going to ProXPN.com slash FTL and getting started with their software. Now, when you're ready to upgrade to the premium account with ProXPN, that'll get you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, the ability to privately torrent, as well as get past regionally blocked websites. It's amazing privacy protection for just about five bucks a month when you use our discount code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And the number 50, as in 50% off the price of their annual account, you get an even better discount if you pay with Bitcoin and use code FTLBTC. Then you'll get 62% off of that annual account price. It's amazing savings on privacy that is priceless. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. So again, those codes are FTL50 and FTLBTC at proxpn.com slash FTL. We continue here. Uh, we were talking about 501c3. Doesn't sound like a real interesting topic. Uh, who really wants to talk about IRS codes and numbers and rules? I personally don't. I'm not interested in the IRS. I don't want to do any business with the IRS. I want nothing to do uh, with those people. But some organizations feel like they need to seek this 501c3 status, that it's very important that there are people out there with money who w would give it to the organization in question, but they won't because the organization is in a 501c3 and therefore the person can't supposedly cannot deduct that donation from their taxes. Right. So that's the reason why, for instance, the Free State Project just recently acquired this 501c3. They had not been up until just recently, like within the last month, I believe. And so in theory now, they should be able to get more donations to the organization as a result of that. So I understand the motivation there. 
But when it comes to churches, there's just a lot of misinformation out there that essentially churches have been uh, misled by the lawyer industrial complex. Uh, these lawyers out there will tell every time a church comes knocking and asking, their answer is, well, yeah, of course you need a 501c3. Here, give me a $5,000 retainer and we'll get the paperwork started for you. Or I don't know what the amount of the money is that the lawyers charge for this, but I don't imagine it's cheap because it seems like it's been an involved process for the Free State Project, a two and a half year long hassle just to acquire this uh, this designation. Yeah, and I had seen a statistic, I think it was like 15 or 20 years ago, where the average approval process on a 501c3 was just a matter of months, like three oh. to four months, and now it's two to three years. It's ridiculous. So when, the, when, the, when it comes to the churches, you can do your own research on this. This is what I learned when I was looking into it, Daryl. You also uh, looked into this as well when we were forming the Shire Free Church. What I learned is, is that IRS says that you can do tax-deductible donations to churches who are not 501c3. Yes. So therefore, the 501c3 process for a church is a complete waste of time. Not only is it a waste of time, it's counterproductive because, as was pointed out by Jay earlier, if you acquire that status, you're then restricted as a church from giving people ideas about how to vote and on issues and on candidates and things like that. It restricts the church's freedom of speech in return for nothing. In return right. for no benefit whatsoever, it seems to me, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, if there's some great benefit to being a 501c3 as a church, I'd really love to know what it is. Let, it, let me know at 855-450-FREE, but from what I can tell, it's only a harm to a church to become a 501c3. It, it probably makes the approval of local property tax exemptions a little easier. Maybe. Uh, but... There's one of the three churches here in New Hampshire that was denied that I believe is a 501c3. Is that right? Which one is that? Peaceful I think Assembly? the Peaceful Assembly is. That's interesting. Or their, their filing of the appeal makes it seem as though they are. So what you're referencing is there's three churches. Uh, all three of them are basically activist churches right. uh, that have been denied. Shire Free Church, Peaceful Assembly Church, and Church of the Sword, all three have been denied in tax exemption uh, filings this year, and they're all three appealing at the Superior Court level as those cases move ahead. We'll tell you more about those, because to me it's a real pure freedom of uh, religion issue. Basically, the tax assessors are saying, we don't think you're a church, and uh, or that you know we're not going to give you this exemption because, well— we don't recognize you as a church. And that's, I, I would love to see a Pastafarian church in Keene apply for the exemption <laughs> just to see what the tax board says to them. Go for it, man. I think it's a great idea. I don't know who would form that church, but uh, somebody could I don't could do know, it. but there have been Pastafarians around the world who, to varying degrees, have you know been recognized as having a legitimate religion by various governments well, i think it was uh some guy in germany that wanted to wear a strainer <laughs> on his or a colander on his head in his driver's his license, license photo, photo and, and they and initially it, right? said no and so he filed an appeal and said i'm a pastafarian it's part of my religion and then the court said okay it's a sh it's a shame that that's what you have to do but that's what it, if 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 you're trying to exert your freedom of religion in this country and apparently in, around the world, they're just going to deny it until you fight for it. And it's the, the whole idea of freedom of religion, just like freedom of speech and right to bear arms, all of it. The whole idea is ridiculous. It's just it means nothing. Uh, the, the government guys just ignore their own rules. They ignore their constitution. Every provision has been broken and ignored. And it's just so sad. It really yes. is. It's frustrating. Let's go to the phones here. James is on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. I love how you guys claim to be ministers, and you have a profession of faith and peace, love, and liberty. But when a vote doesn't turn out as you should like, you just wish all the older people that voted against what you were wishing for would just die off and go away. Oh, I didn't and wish I, that. Little, it's just uh, going to happen oh, okay. inevitably. I misunderstood. I misunderstood that you were wishing they just dropped dead so that the, the vote can come out more to your liking in the future. Just as you support 16-year-olds 
right to vote, which is any society that is asking, that allow, or gives the right to suffrage to 16, 17, and 18 year olds is asking to devolve. Well, why shouldn't they? Isn't society. taxation without representation supposed kids. to be wrong? They're called they're, children. They're young people. Their minds they're are not, not children. Developed. Children are yes, people are. who have not developed in yes, their bodies. They are. They're children. That's why they go to high school. Thanks for the and call. That- toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That is the pro-XPN toll-free line. Uh, by definition, teenagers are not children. Teenagers have gone through puberty and so therefore are not children. Sorry. Well, based on the – and I, I'm just going to play devil's advocate sure. here for a second. Based on – at least one federal government statute or law or whatever you want to call it here in the U S some people are children until the age of 26 really so that they can stay on their parents insurance (laughs) because you know, well kids getting out of college, they don't have jobs that provide insurance. So they need to stay on mommies and daddies. So they're still children as far as the ACA is concerned. Well, you're right about that, Daryl. There is this big push uh, for lack, and I don't know who coined this term, but I like it, the childification of America, where they just continually push the age of adultness, this arbitrary legal age, back further and further in different categories. And also you see this sort of helicopter parenting going on, where young people are babied for as long as possible, all the way into their 20s And, And that's one of the things, whenever... You talk about, you know, the extended life expectancy of, you know, like maybe in the future people will live to 200 years old. And I have said numerous times, like, you know, I don't think that will necessarily extend the years of productivity because then if the life expectancy is 200 as opposed to 70, you're 50, right? You'll be a child until you're 50. You'll retire at 100. Mm -hmm. So you still have roughly the same number of years of productivity. (laughs) And, you know, it's just extending childhood. Um, I never understood why 16 and 17 year olds couldn't vote in the United States. They sure as hell tax you at age 16. If you go and get a job, you're going to get taxes taken out, which means you can't you can't vote and you're being taxed. That's taxation without representation. I was paying taxes at 14. Exactly. So as long as you're paying taxes, you should be able to vote as far as I'm concerned. And in the case of uh, Scotland, the uh, teenagers were the ones, at least the 16 and 17 year olds were the ones voting in the right direction. Overwhelmingly. It's free talk live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
from Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.43 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $391. Antiwar.com reports, in a 78-22 to vote yesterday, the Senate passed the same bill the House of Representatives passed on Wednesday, approving the Obama administration's plan to train and arm a new faction of some 5,000 vetted and moderate Syrian rebels. The plan is to recruit various existing Syrian rebels to go off and train as a new force, fitting the U.S. ideal of a moderate rebel faction to back, and then, in a year, send them back to Syria to fight the Islamic State. Despite considerable retinence about the plan, apparent during Secretary of State John Kerry's testimony to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the vote was not particularly close. The vote is expected to be the only war-related vote the Senate will address before November elections, with senators very keen to delay any broad resolution on the war itself until after the election. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy offered the same assessment in his own comments earlier this week, saying that there would likely be some sort of debate about about an authorization of use of military force sometime after November. The Obama administration insists they don't need any authorization for the war at all, and by the end of November, the war is going to be extremely entrenched and difficult to roll back. Many members of Congress likely to vote for the war fear a backlash from voters if they do, and so they are waiting for the post-election period and hope that the votes won't be a political issue. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports, Canada, one of the harshest critics of Russia's involvement in Ukraine, this week quietly canceled sanctions against Expo Bank and Rosenergo Bank, two small Russian banks on which it imposed measures earlier this year. The cancellations were put into effect at the same time as new sanctions were announced by Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird on Tuesday, including adding Russia's Surebank to the list, but his news release made no mention of lifting the measures against the two banks. Expo Bank ranked is about the 100th largest bank in Russia by assets. Rosenergo Bank had income of $4.2 million in 2012 and assets of $1.01 billion, according to Moody's Investment Services. Quizzed about it in the House of Commons on Thursday after Reuters reported the news, Baird said that the decision was made after the government got new information and undertook further analysis. He said, without explaining how they got on the list in the first place, they are deemed to be sufficiently divorced from events in in Ukraine and Russian aggression against Ukraine. The lifting of the sanctions was mentioned obliquely in an amendment to the Russian Special Economic Measures Regulations on the Canadian Foreign Affairs Department website, referring only to the repealing of items 2 and 3 on a particular part of the list. Expo Bank had always been disputed in its inclusion on the sanctions and had appealed to be taken off. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. The Guardian reports... Scotland stepped back from the brink of ending the 307-year-old union with England and Wales, and Scottish voters decided by a considerable margin to stay with the United Kingdom. With all 32 of Scotland's local authorities having declared their results, 55% of voters cast ballots to reject Scottish independence. But the Yes campaign scored a handful of notable successes, succeeding in the largest city of Glasgow by 53 to 47%, winning 54% in West Dunbartonshire, and a convincing 57% win in Dundee. In his concession speech, Alex Salmon said, Let us not dwell on the distance we have fallen short. Let us dwell on the distance we have traveled. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
Regarded by many as one of the fastest rising online personalities today, social media rock star Ryan Wasserman has 250,000 loyal Twitter followers and earns $28,000 a year at his job as an administrative assistant. The Onion spoke to the online luminary at KPL Insurance, where he works from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and makes roughly $13 an hour. I'm just trying to bring my unique perspective to everybody. Um, that's what my followers expect, and I like to think I deliver. Wasserman, who currently has $900 in his checking account, regularly engages in conversations with high-profile celebrities and takes the bus to work from the two-bedroom apartment he shares with a 23-year-old he met on Craigslist. Actually, I just started a Tumblr because sometimes 140 characters just doesn't cut it. I just had a Google Glass tweet that Questlove retweeted again. Um, so, uh, so, KPL, this is Ryan. Yeah, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Uh... This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching here into yet another hour of fun. You can take control of the airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If you're just tuning in, well, the news out of Scotland, not the best. Not the best news. 55% voting to stay in the United Kingdom. It's a bummer, uh, but, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, at least the first time. And, you know, for the first vote. It's not a bad turnout. It's not uh, not a bad result, I would Not say. bad at all, especially when you consider that about two months ago, it was a 22-point differential yeah. in the opinion polls. But, but uh, more than two months ago, it was an even wider gap. I think it was like 70% were for staying in earlier this year. So it's really shifted over the last year uh, that people have had the chance to persuade their friends and fr uh, family members on this issue. As we saw in the breakdown here from ZeroHedge.com, there was a post-referendum poll that found that younger people we're more likely to vote yes to secede. People over the age of 55 more likely to vote no. In fact, 65 plus, 73% of them voting no. Uh, 55 to 64, 57% voting no. And then once you go below the age of 55, you start getting yes votes in almost every category except for 18 to 24. The 18 to 24-year-olds, 48% voted yes, but again, that's pretty close. And if you average in the rest of the age ranges under 55, it would have been yes had those older folks not been in the, the game. That doesn't mean that I wish those people were dead. Somebody called in and right. said that you're not peace-oriented because you're wishing the deaths of people. No, I just acknowledged that older people are going to die off sooner than younger people, and the statistics show that younger people support secession. So let I just want to see that happen because I think it's good for the world. Right, and just to be clear, and I, I don't want to speak for you, Ian, but at least where I'm coming from, even if the majority of people in Scotland would have voted to leave the United Kingdom, mm. I think that those people that voted to remain part of the United Kingdom should be allowed to remain British citizens Why not? Yeah, if they want while to keep... living in Scotland if that's what they want. Sure, if they want to keep paying taxes to the crown, they should be able to, right? Right. Why would I want to stop them from doing that? It's just that the people who don't want to be a part of that scam and that scheme anymore should be able to opt out, which is why I support personal secession. So there's some more interesting numbers here, and then we'll actually get into some statistics about Americans' support of secession, because last night we shared a poll that we'd shared in the past, a uh, September of 2013 poll that showed that about 21% of Americans uh, were in favor of the idea of states having the right to secede. That didn't mean they would vote for it. It just meant that they favored that right of a state to secede. So there's been a new poll that's come out literally just today or yesterday, and we have those numbers. But in the post-referendum Scotland poll, uh, there's some more interesting breakdowns here. Number four on this question, they again, they interviewed over 2,000 adults who voted in the referendum uh, the other day. Question four was, would you be reluctant in any way to tell your friends, family, or colleagues how you voted? Uh, the majority of the voters, 89% of the yes voters, said they would not be reluctant. 86% of the no voters said they would not be reluctant to tell their friends. Five, I'm going to read out three important or three reasons people have given for voting yes. 
Please rank them in order of how important they were in your decision, even if there were other reasons that were important to you. The 70% of yes voters said the most important reason was the principle that all decisions about Scotland should be taken in Scotland. 70% of yes voters said that was their most important reason. 20% said that on balance, Scotland's future looked brighter as an independent country. And 10% of them said that independence would mean no more conservative governments. Number, <laughs> number six was another similar question, but for the no voters. And, and they're just uh, for the sake of clarification – Conservative there is with a capital C, this, meaning yes. conservative party, not necessarily conservative ideology. Number six on the question was for the no voters. Same question. What was the most important reason of these options as far as why you voted no? I hate William Wallace. 47% of no voters said they voted no, most importantly because the risks of becoming independent looked too great when it came to things like the currency, EU membership, the economy, jobs, and prices. 27% of them voted no because a strong attachment to the UK and its shared history, culture, and traditions. And 25% <laughs> voted no uh, because a no vote would still mean extra powers for the Scottish Parliament together with the security of remaining part of the UK, giving the best of both worlds. What was the percentage on that third one? The third one, 25%. Okay, and that's, as I speculated earlier, that a lot of people were voting no because of the promises by the British Parliament of, if you vote no, we'll give you more autonomy. Mm, yeah, so 25, so one, a quarter of no voters, that was their, their motivation. So there you go, your speculation was correct. Uh, and then finally, number seven, if it turns out that a majority has voted no in the referendum, which is what it turned out, uh, for how long do you think the question of whether Scotland should be independent or remain in the UK will remain settled? Yes, voters. 45% of them said it will be settled for the next five years, and 20% of no voters said it will be settled for the next five years. 16% uh, of yes voters said for the next 10 years, 18% of no voters for the next 10 years, and so on. So I think it's it's been fascinating to watch. I, it's it's disappointing, obviously, that it didn't go through. And I'm wondering, will this come up again? Will it take another five years for this to come up again? Could it be another two, three years? Uh, when will we see this question again? Because I suspect uh, I'm thinking maybe ten. I suspect this won't. This isn't over in Scotland. I, I don't think it's over, but yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be less than five years. Hmm. I think ten, somewhere between five to ten. I, I think is a safe estimate also another interesting question number two on this list is when did you finally make up your mind on how to vote in the referendum Ooh. of the no voters 72 percent of them knew that they were going to vote no longer than a year ago and or i always have known how i would vote so 72 percent uh, 10 percent of them was longer than a year 62 percent says i have always known how i would vote so the people who didn't want to change anything were you know they'd always been that way but the yes voters were more undecided until the last month week few days uh last day so 52 percent of yes voters made a decision since the beginning of the year uh, or in the last month or in the last week or so within the last year 48 percent knew how they were going to vote longer than a year ago or have always known. So the I've always known how I would vote category, uh, thir only 38% of the yes voters always knew that they supported independence. So that's a that's a significant chunk. That's 62% of the yes voters who who didn't know. You know, they didn't know up until basically the last year or, or two. Right. And as I had referenced earlier, it was within the last two months right. that the 22% gap was narrowed to where basically it was a five-point swing. Had 5% of the voters gone the opposite way, then the results would have turned out different. And a lot of that had to do with the televised debates mm. in which Alex Salmond just completely demolished the... You know, we have to stay with England uh, supporter who was up there, you know, telling all the people the fearful reasons of here's all the bad things that will happen if we Scots mm -hmm. decide to leave. In fact, if you tally it up, you talked about the last two months. 
Uh, they break it down. It's since the beginning of last year, or excuse me, since the beginning of the year, in the last month, in the last week, in the last few days, and on referendum day. If you look at the yes voters there and you tally up day of, last few days, last week, and last month, uh, you get looks like eight and seven, 15, six, 21, plus 18. So about, uh, about, about 40% actually made their decision within the last month to go ahead and vote yes for secession. And that says to me there's uh, there's a lot of persuasion that can still be done. Yes. There's a lot of people who you know were on the fence right up until the last minute. This isn't a done deal. And the same thing is going to apply here in the United States where some interesting numbers are coming out where oh, about a quarter, apparently, about a quarter of Americans are on board for secession. In some extent. To right. some extent. Do give us the details here in a moment, Daryl. You've got that, right? Yes. All right. We'll come back with that here in moments. And then uh, another shocking number about how many Americans can name the three branches of government we'll get into that as well uh interesting numbers here tonight on free talk live but your calls come first if you make them we'd love to hear from you about whatever's on your mind how do you feel about secession this is free talk live these days when i'm in a relationship i feel like i'm alone like there's no one behind the mask no voice on the other end of the line are you looking for a car insurance policy totally devoted to you At Geico.com, you'll find a sympathetic ear, a shoulder to cry on, butterfly kisses, and easy ways to pay your bill and manage your policy. We're waiting with bated breath to help you save money and talk about your feelings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you hundreds on car insurance. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? 
For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls. You just dial in toll free. That's all you have to do. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, we got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. You do have to send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then it'll be easy for you to call us from that point forward. So, again, username lrn.fm on Skype. And it, it sounds better generally. So much better. Sounds better. As long as you have a decent internet connection yep. that you're not uploading a bunch of stuff on. If you're torrenting, it might not work for you, but yeah. Or, you know... Watching YouTube, YouTube video. videos or, you right. know, as long as you have a good internet connection and a decent microphone. Yeah. Well, you know what? Even without a decent microphone, it, even as, for instance, if you've got a cell phone, you can put the Skype app on your cell phone and that will make your phone sound better. The microphone in your cell phone is a okay microphone. It's just that when you talk over regular phone lines, it sounds like you're on a you know, 1950s phone because the old phone lines are still routed through old networks and they have to cut the right. audio quality. So just even just using the Skype app over your cell phone to call us via your cell phone will increase the quality of your cell phone call uh, to us. So if you can't use Skype, you can call us on uh, the old toll-free line at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. I had somebody uh, contact me today saying, hey, how do I get Bitcoin? And, uh, well, the answer is ExpressCoin.com. Bitcoin. Now's a great time, actually, to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin's on uh, sale. It sure, it sure is. What was it, like $400, I think, when I woke up today? Uh, and then uh, last time I looked, it was still right around that same price point, 380 something. I'll think. pull up the price you tell people about ExpressCoin. You can also get Dogecoin, uh, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, and Litecoin from ExpressCoin.com. And you can do it easily. It's quick. And you can do it with money order, check, or wire transfer, even cash deposit. Just get started. Create your account at ExpressCoin.com. And you can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. It's available in Canada and the United States. They make it easy, and it works. And customer service is important to them at ExpressCoin.com. In fact, you can even get a sweet deal by using code FTL and get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for zero fee. No transfer fee if you use code FTL at expresscoin.com on less than $40 worth of Bitcoin orders. If you go over 40 bucks, it's only a 3% fee the last time I checked, and that's at an amazing price. It's the best price I think you're going to find online for transferring cash into Bitcoin. So go to expresscoin.com. What is the current Bitcoin price? $395.24. That is, uh, now by the way, remember, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, hence buy up to $40 worth. So that would be uh, approximately one-tenth. Point Bitcoin. one Bitcoin would be $39.52 and no transaction fee. If you use code FTL at expresscoin.com. So you've been waiting. If you've been waiting and thinking about getting Bitcoin, you know, this might be a good time to do it. And of course, it's hard to predict what it's going to do next. I mean, tomorrow it could be, you know, t- in an hour, it could be lower in price or it could be higher. Uh, so it's unpredictable. We don't know. It's, this is a new world. This is a new currency. It's a decentralized currency. This is not issued by any government or any bank. You can send money to anyone anywhere in an instant for next to zero cost. I mean, it's an amazing technology and it's working very well. Uh, so go to expresscoin.com to grab yours. We've been talking about secession uh, and in fact, the Scottish secession movement, while it didn't ultimately succeed at the polls the other day, a couple days ago, it has succeeded in bringing the idea of secession back to the forefront, back to uh, the table for discussion. And as I was saying last night on the show, I think this is one of the most important issues of our time. And I, I suspect you would agree with me on this, Daryl. Yes. Uh, and I think that this is a great excuse to, to start a conversation. You've got a weekend coming up here. If you're going to be hanging out with friends or family, you got a party to attend. What a great time to bring up. Use Scotland as an excuse to bring this issue up. Hey, did you guys hear about the uh, what happened in Scotland this week? What do you think about that? 
and just see what your friends and family think about this. Get the conversation started. Maybe they haven't thought about it. Maybe they didn't even know about what was going on in Scotland. I think that the more we can get people talking about secession, the the more we can raise that issue in people's consciousness. The more we talk about it, the more it becomes real. And I don't know about you, but I want this to be real. I want this to happen. Oh, I want it to happen, and not just for Scotland. I want it everywhere. Not just for New Hampshire or Texas. I think that there should be as many countries as there are people. Yes, and I totally agree, but you know, baby steps. We'll get <laughs> right. there. Toll free so, number. You know, one more country is one more step towards yep. 7 billion countries. Toll free number is 855 450 free. So, shifting from over across the pond to here in the United States. Last night, it was a poll that we shared with was about 21% of Americans saying they supported a state's right to uh, vote to secede from the United States. Approximately 17% of Americans said they would vote to uh, to secede their state from their state, excuse me, to their section of their state from their state to create another state within the United States. To me, that's okay. So like the North Colorado thing or the, the state of Jefferson or California splitting into six separate states. I mean, I support that, but it's not as exciting to me as true secession, which would be to leave the United States and become an independent uh, country at that point. And so that's what this new poll is all about, right, Daryl? There's a, there's a fresh poll that just hit today. Yep, fresh poll done by Reuters and Ipsos, and it was conducted between August 23rd and September 16th, and they found that 23.9% of Americans who were polled say that they strongly support or tend to support the idea of their state Hmm. leaving the U.S. All right. 53.3% of the 8,952 people that were asked strongly opposed or tended to oppose that notion. I love it. The article here says... That leaves about, what, 20% or so that uh, are undecided? uh, 15-ish, maybe. Uh, Just running the numbers in my head. Somewhere between 15 and 20, I I think, would be undecided. Uh, now that's different wording than the uh, the Rasmussen poll from 2013, which asked if they supported the right of a state to secede. Similar, but not exactly the same question, where only about 21% said they supported that right. Here, you're saying tw- almost 25, 20, about 24%. 23.9. Uh, t- so approximately 24% of Americans, almost one out of four Americans, saying they would vote for secession, basically, right? That they support their state seceding. They support or tend to support the idea of their state seceding. Of not, their state Not some leaving. other state leaving. Right. So this isn't a question of, do you think that any state Mm -hmm. has a right or should leave? It's, do you support or tend to support your state doing so? I think it's it's a good question, and I'm glad to see it. But I, I would love to see the response of people being asked, do you support any state leaving? I would also be interested in seeing that because I remember when, uh, you recall after 2012 election, there was these petitions, these online petitions that uh, people were signing, Texas. The, the WhiteHouse.gov. Yeah. Uh, and Texas had, yeah. what, like 100,000 so- uh, signatures or something like couple that? A couple hundred. So uh, those things came out, and there was a lot of discussion in the media about this. And I remember reading, I don't know if it was Slate.com, but some lefty site where there was some opinion columnist who was saying, this is great, let them go. The idea being that if the red states leave, then that makes it more you know, of a better situation for the blue state folks, right? And gives them more control over the United States. So it seems to me like everybody's got an interest in seeing and supporting the idea of secession, even though obviously majority of Americans don't support it. But there's point. more from this poll that I want to get into. We'll do that in moments. Your calls are welcome. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. 
Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, right. Which is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, it's certainly the slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, the, Avast. <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take I'm on the high seas. Trying to think of uh, this this famous uh, American pirate, but I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now, now. Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon beard. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves and dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. Uh, of course, we'll take your calls also on Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. And if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide only the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. 
Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Now, ModUp.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You order with Bitcoin, you get 33% off at ModUp.net. And to make the deal even better, use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. Again, that's code FTL for an amazing deal over at ModUp.net. M-O-D-U-P dot net. So, uh, Daryl, you are sharing with us the results of a poll. Who was the polling company on this one? It was uh, commissioned by Reuters, done by Ipsos. Ipsos. So, uh, interesting question that Americans were asked. About 24% of Americans, almost one out of four, say they support their state seceding from the United States, which I think is pretty exciting. About another 15 or so percent said we're unsure. And then there were about, what was it, 57%? 53% that opposed or tended to oppose the idea of their state leaving the union. So we still have some work to do here. Uh, and obviously, I think this conversation needs to continue in the workplaces and the dinner tables around America. And we need to persuade our friends and family members about this issue. Why would anyone want to stay with the United States federal government? Besides fear, which we went into quite deep last night, the issue of fear-mongering and the fear that the red Chinese are going to invade or that the feds themselves are going to be the uh, are going to be rolling in tanks. It's always fear is the reason to not secede from the US. But to me, if you acknowledge that you're afraid, especially of the federal government, that's a great reason to secede. Why would you want to be under the thumb of a bunch of tyrants? Anyway, there was more from this uh, study here that you wanted to share, Daryl. Yeah, so the author of this article here from Reuters says, The urge to sever ties with Washington cuts across party lines and regions, mm. though Republicans and those from rural western states are generally warmer to the idea. I imagine that would have been different if the poll was done a decade ago. I tend to agree. Yep. Uh, warmer to the idea than Democrats and those in the Northeast. Anger with Barack Obama's handling of issues ranging from health care reform to the rise of the Islamic State drives some with the feeling of Republican respondents citing dissatisfaction with his administration as coloring their thinking. So people yeah. are admitting, you know, like, I just I don't, don't like, like Obama, guys. so I, I think we'd be better. Yeah. It's not principle that is driving those right. people. It's not the desire for independence. It's just, I don't like that character in the White House. But others said that long-running Washington gridlock has prompted them to wonder if their state would be better off striking out on their own. Uh, one gentleman from South Carolina says, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference anymore which political party is running things. Nothing gets done. The state would be better off handling things on their own. Uh, falling public approval of the Obama administration, attention to the Scottish vote, and the success of activists who accuse the U.S. government of overstepping its authorities, such as the self-proclaimed militia members who flocked to Nevada's Bundy Ranch earlier this year during a standoff over grazing rights, is driving interest in secession. Uh, Mordecai Lee, who is a professor of government affairs at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, who studies secessionist movements, says it seems to have heated up, especially since the election of President Obama. Republicans tended to favor secession of their state with 29.7% support and only 21% of Democrats favor hmm. their state seceding it doesn't give any indication what percentage of political independents mm -hmm. or libertarians or green party yeah uh, you know because those seem to get overlooked a lot of times especially when it's one of these you know left right paradigm sort of polls of no, the only options are Republican or Democrat. You can't be anything else. Now, you said the South, uh, the Southeast was more likely to support secession? Southwest. South, the Southwest. That's yes. interesting. Uh, with 34.1% of respondents in that area supporting mm -hmm. secession, although they don't necessarily define Southwest, it does say that the region includes Texas, so I would guess 
Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Arizona. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, they they don't necessarily say. They do write that respondents from New England only supported the idea with approximately 17%. Now, New England, of course, is also a fairly large area as well. So I wonder, yeah, I still find myself wanting to see some results from New Hampshire. I don't want to see it bad enough to try to, uh, you know, create my own poll. But uh, nonetheless, I hope that we'll see that at some point to, and I don't know what it costs to run a poll, but I imagine it's a couple grand or something like that. At least. Actually, depending on the number of people that you plan to wind up getting to respond, mm-hmm. you could do a poll for a couple hundred dollars. No kidding. Like what? How many people would that get you? Uh, that would get you a, about a thousand, between a thousand and two. A thousand is pretty typical, right? For a phone poll, that's that's pretty standard. But my question is, how do you reach the cell phone people? Because I don't want to just call all the elderly folks with a landline. And I ask get them. calls all the time from polling companies on your cell. Not necessarily from polling companies, but from the you know the robocall mm. political things. Because cell phones are not exempt, or, or uh, let, let me let me rephrase that. They're not automatically included in the don't call database. Mm. And then things that are deemed to be political don't have to follow the, the do don't not call, call registry. registry. Let's go to Morgan in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Morgan. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hey, you know, I consider I live out in the Southwest, and I just found this conversation so interesting, and as I was thinking about it, you know, I'd be in support of just about every state seceding from the United States. Me Either too. Either that or get rid of all the, uh, you know, just federal laws and just abide by state law and, you know, have federal for a few things, I suppose. But, I mean, what they've done with this country, and it's not just the current administration, past administrations going back decades. I, I would dare say going back centuries. Yeah, centuries. You know, and it's just one of those things, you know, here I am on the west side of the United States, and laws are written for things going on on the east side of the state that aren't particularly, or the east side of the country that aren't happening over here. And it's like, man, now I got to abide by these laws, even yeah. though it's not a problem over here. Well, it just kind of doesn't make sense. I think Mark's uh, example is really stellar. You know, the idea that we here in New Hampshire have uh, more in common with the people in California than we do with the people in Montreal, which are you know four hours away from us, is ridiculous. Uh, we're definitely we definitely have more in common, at least geographically, with the people in Montreal than uh, than the people in California. So to hell with the federal government. Now, when when your mo- what is your motivation? Is it political? Is it just that you don't like the Democrats, or is it more than that? Uh, I I think it's a little more than that. I mean, it's, it's you know every state has you know their own Democratic Party, Republican Party, their supporters of all kinds of ideas. You know the problem is is. There's so many people with all these different ideas, okay? There's over 300 million people Mm -hmm. in America. How can one centralized government or overseer control or make happy? Exactly. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Uh, get a free pound to I try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. He the Help others he one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has sure it. Books, electronics, charges, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Like, you know, now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go so to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping ball, anyway, so, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terragonics. 
Pro-EM1, a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Telephone numbers, searches. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free about whatever's on your mind. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online just go to freetalklive.com enjoy the features that we share with you there once again that's freetalklive.com now if you enjoy this program and you would like to support free talk live shop with us just go to shop.freetalklive.com there are links there to amazon different amazons for different parts of the world amazon canada amazon uk and Amazon US. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and for, uh, Free Talk Live, when you buy something there, will get a portion of your purchase. It's that simple. Same great deals, same huge selection, user reviews, everything you're used to, free super saver shipping, all that stuff. It's all the same old Amazon. You're just entering through our affiliate link, so Free Talk Live gets credit for the sale, and it makes a big difference for us when you do that. So please, take the extra moment, go to shop.freetalklive.com, and if you want to save a little bit of time, Uh, If you know, for instance, you're always going to order from the U.S. Amazon, you just click into the U.S. Amazon link, then bookmark that landing page. It's that landing page that has our sort of our code information in the URL. If you bookmark the landing page, then all you have to do from that point forward is just go back to your bookmarks. It'll save you the extra step and we'll still get the percentage. So thank you for doing that at shop dot freetalklive.com we've been recapping uh the secession world here tonight we finally have the final numbers from scotland 55 percent voting to stay in the united kingdom scotland has resulted in all the, the whole scene over there has resulted in a lot of searches you go on google trends uh the searching searching for scotland is up there i mean people are talking about this all around the world there are other secessionist movements not just in the united states but all across europe 
Scotland is not going to be the only secessionist movement in the news as time goes on. And, and the more we can get this stuff talked about, the more uh, it'll be become real and the more likely someone, somewhere, some group will succeed at seceding. And I look forward to celebrating whoever it is, whoever it is that's next. Daryl, you were sharing with us some interesting numbers. I don't know if we've uh, burned through all the interesting ones yet. We did. Uh, okay, we did. Uh, there, there were you know, just some random quotes from some of the people. And one of, one of these quotes I think is rather interesting. Uh, someone by the name of Brittany Royal, who's a 31-year-old nurse from Wilkesboro, North Carolina, said anger over the... Obamacare, and I hate using that term, but it's the term used here in the article, so Mm -hmm. I'll use it, over the health care reform law made her wonder if her state would be better off on its own. Hmm. She says, quote, that has really hurt a lot of people here, myself included. My insurance went from $40 a week for a family of four up to over $600 a month for a family of four. The That's North Carolina jump. government itself is sustainable. Governor McCrory, I think he has a better health care plan than President Obama. Yeah, I, I hope that we see more of this. You know, otherwise, we can just continue staying in the United States and continue paying for wars that just uh, gin up more violence against people here in this country, around the world. And now, apparently, the U.S. troops are going to be going to uh, stop Ebola. I don't know if you heard about this one. Oh, yeah. And somehow they're going to, you know, like, shoot bullets at a disease and make it go away. Yeah, they're going to bomb it, uh, apparently, to death or something like that. Uh, the Wall Street Journal has a report on this, and that is that uh, President Barack Obama's plan to contain the Ebola outbreak presents the U.S. military with a logistical challenge with a few precedent with few precedents. One that it will be under pressure to execute quickly while ensuring that the 3,000 military personnel involved are protected from the deadly virus. Obama on Tuesday warned the epidemic could not only infect hundreds of thousands of people, but carry wide security implications, even though chances of an outbreak in the U.S. are extremely low. He said after a briefing of the Centers for Disease Control, quote, it's a potential threat to the global security if these countries break down, if their economies break down, if people panic. So because the U.S. government is apparently the world's government, uh, they're now going and sending 3,000 troops into Africa where they are going to do something. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do to stop Ebola, uh, but that's what their plan is. The American military has experience, claims the Wall Street Journal, responding to humanitarian crises abroad, including the 2010 earthquake and cholera outbreak in Haiti and the 1994 East African refugee crisis created by the Rwandan genocide. But the Ebola crisis in West Africa presents a unique set of challenges, according to J. Stephen Morrison, head of the Global Health Policy Center at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. The operation will require the military to fuse its experience in responding to natural disasters with its training in bio-warfare to minimize the risks of Americans contracting the disease. Personnel will bring medical assistance and training, logistical expertise, and engineering experience to set up 17 field hospitals with 100 beds each, more than tripling current capacity. Quote, this is unprecedented as a public health operation led by the U.S. military. You know, I wonder, uh, did people in the military think they were signing up for this when they joined the military? Probably not. No. Although, if you if you listen to the advertisements on a lot of the terrestrial radio for the National Guard, then people do think that they're signing up to just go fight natural disasters. Really? There, there's one of the ads that runs on one of the local radio stations here in Keene, and yeah, I'm I've sure it runs one. across the country to where they've got quotes from people, oh, when I got the call about the hurricane, you know, I, I really got excited because it was the first time I got called up to go do this something. This is my chance to serve my community. Well, you know, I don't have a problem with people going and volunteering to help you know, sandbag some rivers or whatever uh, to protect property and, and try to help people and save lives. I don't have a problem with that at all. And I don't have an issue with somebody going over and trying to stop Ebola and suiting up in some kind of a protection suit and doing whatever they need to do to stop Ebola. 
but I do have a problem with being forced to support things like this, especially forced to support what is inevitably going to be a bureaucratic, mismanaged run at this. Right. If you want to you know, give some money voluntarily to an organization that has been helping Ebola patients, mm. Doctors Without Borders yeah. has been treating Ebola patients. And they've been doing so voluntarily, not through force. Right. What does it cost the U.S. military to send 3,000 troops anywhere, let alone 3,000 troops with, you know, special Ebola fighting sticks or whatever it is they're going to use? It got, it's not going to be cheap. Anytime no. the U.S. government does anything, they pay more than they have to pay for it. And uh, And again... Let's let the market decide on this. If you let Doctors Without Borders or other missionary groups or whoever else it would be that would be interested in taking this on, you let them step up and do their own fundraising to go and, and help out in the way they think is best, then each individual can donate to the campaign that they think will be most effective. And if there's more than one happening, if Doctors Without Borders is going in and you know so is some missionary group or whatever, then... You know, maybe one person, one group is more efficient than the other. Maybe one of them is more uh, effective at helping people than the other. I would want to support the more effective group, or maybe I'd want to support both of them, or maybe none of them. I don't know what I would want to do, but I know that I'm forced to support the U.S. military's efforts through the fo- the threat of taxation, through the threat of violence, and I just don't think that it's okay to use violence, even if the end goal is a laudable one. There's no doubt. I'd rather have troops helping people with medical problems than killing people. I mean, if I had to choose right. one, one operation versus the other, I'd rather have the troops leave the Middle East and go and try to help you know, solve the Ebola crisis. But obviously, that's not my choice. I don't get to choose that. They just do whatever the hell they want to do. Right, and, and they're not going to be, pay for it. They're, they're not going to be pulling troops from the Middle East no. to go fight Ebola. No, they're not. They're actually, the Congress voted... On Wednesday and Thursday, the House of Representatives and Senate, respectively, voted overwhelmingly to go give military training to Syrian rebels. Mm. Share your thoughts with us here. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE-GREG is in New York. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hey, guys. Uh, how was the weekend? Uh, it's not here. yet the weekend. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're here at work, uh, and we will work through the weekend. But go ahead with your thoughts. Um, I wanted to address the question of what are rights? Um, with the Scottish uh, uh, secession uh, now, uh, I guess, behind us, uh, there was a chance that Scotland, uh, at least part of Scotland, might, might secede. And uh, I wanted to ask if you guys, uh, I know you're talking about seceding uh, possibly, uh, if you were able to form your own land, um, what would be the rights that you, uh, how would you set up the, the government? Because if New Hampshire uh, seceded, it would still be a state. It would still have a government, still be, you know, have a lot of cities. So wouldn't that still be bad? Well, yeah, any uh, centralized monopoly is a bad thing. But one that is closer to home is better than one that's a thousand miles away. Hang on, we can talk about rights here in a moment if you'd like. I'd be happy to. And I think that's an interesting discussion because a lot of people don't really understand rights and we can get into that coming up here in the third hour of Free Talk Live, which is next. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Is gun ownership about target shooting, hunting, and self-defense, or is there more to it? Oath Keepers and Brayburn Entertainment present Molon Labe, inspired by the works of Edwin Vieira Jr., explains why we need to revitalize the state militia system. Featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Larry, and Stuart Rhodes. Available on DVD at moviepubs.net, oathkeepers.org, and gunowners.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. 
You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,219, silver open at $18.36, and Bitcoin is trading around $393. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch is reporting that the Ferguson police officer behind the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown testified in front of a grand jury on Wednesday. The Post-Dispatch stated that Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson spoke for four hours in front of the seven men and five women on the grand jury. Wilson was reportedly cooperative with St. Louis County and federal investigators. The grand jury has been expected to make a decision on whether or not to charge Wilson by mid-October. Earlier this week, CNN reported that St. Louis County Judge Carolyn Whittington had extended the grand jury's deadline until January 7th. It started with a wellness check. It ended with a four-hour standoff between police and a man who allegedly wanted to kill himself. Jose Silva posted live images of the SWAT team pointing guns at his car to the social media site Whisper. Silva recently broke up with his girlfriend. It was she who initially called law enforcement and indicated he may be armed and was making suicidal statements. Hours later, he was clock driving his car over 100 miles per hour, and the standoff began. After spraying chemicals into his car to induce nausea, the police arrested him and took him into custody, where he'll spend 72 hours for psychiatric evaluation. No weapons were found. The fire chief garrison of Reno, Nevada, is warning residents to be very aware and very vigilant in response to a recent rise in fires caused by so-called smart meters. The new electric meters send energy use data electronically to electric companies, reducing the need for an in-person meter read. Of the nine fires in the area that appear to be linked to smart meters, one resulted in death. Nevada Electric reports over 70 consumed meters, meaning the cover is melted or breached and soot can be present. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, at 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard, Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Activists with the Detroit Water Brigade are calling on Detroit citizens to join in the Occupy the Bankruptcy campaign to fight the controversial water shutoffs taking place in the city. The plan calls for a meeting Monday at 8.30 in the morning on the steps of the federal courthouse for a speak-out with families facing water shutoffs. The group is demanding that U.S. Judge Stephen Rhodes immediately stop the shutoff program and create an income-based water affordability plan. Former drone intelligence analyst Heather Linebaugh has begun speaking out in support of alternative treatment methods for post-traumatic stress disorder for veterans. I use yoga a lot. I practice transcendental meditation, and I was actually part of a case study that studying the effects of relaxation massage on people with PTSD and actually studied my sleep patterns when I was able to sleep longer after I got massaged 
and my mood patterns, like how my mood was while I was in the program getting massage regularly. I used medicinal marijuana for quite some time to sleep at night. Linebaugh served in the United States Air Force from 2009 until March of 2012 as an imagery analyst and geospatial analyst for the drone program during the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan. A new study suggests that veterans dealing with PTSD may benefit from breathing-based meditation treatment. Researchers with the University of Wisconsin-Madison published the study in the Journal of Traumatic Stress. Chartered psychologist Dr. Kate Sparks with the British Psychological Society said the study showed how breathing is radically affected by how a person is feeling and that deeper, fuller breaths can help manage PTSD symptoms. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan, reporting. It's the Onion Radio News. Raccoon leaders call for the loosening of garbage can lids. This is Doyle Redland reporting. In a 4 a.m. speech at the group's annual Washington, D.C. convention this morning, North American Raccoon Federation President Bristletail called upon homeowners to loosen the lids of their garbage cans, providing the ring-tailed mammals with greater access to discarded food scraps during nocturnal scavenging. Every time you seal a standard 30-gallon garbage can, as many as six raccoons are forced to go without their necessary daily supply of congealed baked beans, rancid cottage cheese chunks, and moldy cantaloupe rinds. The 26-pound varmint closed his speech with a stern warning that without raccoons, possums could take over the world. Royal Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in the studio tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there on our site. You can create the content. What you see on the front page has been put there by listeners just like you. You submit whatever you want. Maybe it's a news article, blog post, YouTube video. Whatever you see online that you want to share with us, share with our listeners, submit it there to the front page of the website, and then you can vote up or down. You can vote on the, the different things that other people have submitted there as well over at freetalklive.com. It is Reddit-based. It, that means it's free. So go to freetalklive.com to get started with that. We're going to get back into your calls and thoughts here. By the way, our username on Skype is lrn.fm. You may send a contact request there. It'll be approved. It'll be easy for you to call us on Skype. We're going to get to a Skype call here in a little bit, but we actually have Greg on the line first. Uh, Greg is in Brooklyn, New York. And Greg, you'd called in to talk about the idea of rights and uh, secession. So go ahead and sort of recap for listeners just tuning in because you just barely got started right before we had to go to the news. Right. So, um, you know, we have this idea that uh, what if you were able to secede uh, to quit it all and get your own land, um, and you would have, let's say, a lot of land, and you would have to share with other people, how would you um, run that area? How would it be organized? And uh, whatever the system was, how do you, like, how, what is your conception of rights? Because uh, from what I understand, if you're a libertarian or like an American-style libertarian, like anarcho-capitalist, uh, then you would really be into property, uh, so can you explain, like, where does the right to property come from? Why is, why is that right? Is there, are there any other rights besides okay. that one? So you've hit a whole bunch of things there in that, uh, in that statement and the, the, the question. Uh, well, we can talk about rights and just but briefly to answer your question about secession. If New Hampshire were to secede tomorrow, uh, <laughs> New Hampshire already has a government set up. There's already a constitution here. Uh, and, and, you know, all, as all things considered, the New Hampshire Constitution is a pretty decent one. It's got a right to revolution in it, the right to conscience. Uh, there's a number of useful things in there. I'm sure, Daryl, you have a few favorite uh, favorites as well. Uh, I do love the right to conscience, mm -hmm. the supposed right to revolution, even though, you know, no matter how many times it gets brought up in, in court, court, 
the judge just sort of glosses over and well there were rights that were mentioned but uh, because you didn't <laughs> file certain papers then I don't have to consider those and you didn't yeah. delve into why you'd su- believe that right applies sure and of course you couldn't delve into it because you didn't file papers saying that you wanted to bring a constitutional claim so therefore I just have to you know like acknowledge that you mentioned it so the government uh, is already existing in New Hampshire would just we would be lopping off the federal government and then we can deal with changing the New Hampshire government uh, as as time goes on I mean the the difference between what we have with New Hampshire and what might be an ideal for a voluntarist uh, is you know th- there's a lot to be done there but I think just getting out from underneath the thumb of the federal government removing one layer of government yeah. Is a good start. Would be a nice start. But let's get into the issue of rights because I think that's really important. And you were talking mm-hmm. about property. And by the way, I'm not an anarcho capitalist. I don't necessarily support one economic system of organization over another. Uh, and I certainly am not an anarchist because cool. I don't support uh, the idea of no rules. I, I don't have a problem with rules. And I think that the term anarchy has a suggestion of no rules, even if the actual definition means no rulers Uh, i'm also in favor of self-rule so to have no ruler would mean i wouldn't be ruling myself and so therefore that doesn't make sense (laughs) what does Uh, that mean by the way to to own yourself or to rule yourself i've always wondered what what is meant by that what do you think is meant by that i i I think well to me that sounds very much like a slogan like right to life or right to choose like it doesn't mean much when you get into the details but i could be wrong do i own you no, but I mean, what you know? I D- does that, someone uh, else own you? What is ownership? What does that mean? Ownership generally means control over something. Well, and nobody frequently. has absolute control over anyone. Frequently exclusive control. Generally, most people would acknowledge they have control over themselves. Uh, that right. They, that they own I mean, we're themselves. We're interdependent. To some extent, we're into. If I have a family, uh, you know, we're more interdependent on each other. Sure, we all are interdependent. We have to interact with one another to to continue to exist. No one is an island, and if you try to go it alone, you're not going. To, it's not going to work out very well for you uh, in life. Right. But uh, the idea that you don't own yourself uh, is, you know, I think a pretty ridiculous concept. You're the one who has your own volition. You're the one getting out of bed in the morning. You're the one making choices. Uh, so it's pretty clear to me that you own yourself, whether you agree with that or not. You know, that's no. That's I, agree, I agree. I just don't understand what that sentence means i mean of course i have freedom to choose certain things within my resources and uh if that means i own myself then very well okay okay so back to the issue of rights uh your question was basically what are rights who decides what rights are can you kind of refresh me on the the question of rights yeah basically what is your like i have a conception of rights but i wanted to hear like what is your conception of rights and are there any other rights uh, how, who decides basically what are right? Uh, oh yeah, and you'd asked about property as well. You'd asked about the idea of, of property because you're not a you're not a, right. you don't buy into the whole property thing from my under, understanding of uh, conversations with no, no. you previously. Uh, I want I want to be very clear. Like Obama says, I want to be very clear. Um, I respect property rights, but I also respect other rights, and I think that rights are protections given by government and they have to be balanced against totally disagree i don't think rights are given by government i think rights are an agreement between human beings that came about because they work because it makes sense so the idea of a right to life uh you know you have the right to life and you, because you, we value living and uh and it's better as you were saying to work together with people uh, but if you're going to be alive to you know it, it helps to have people around to help you know to help get things done that you can distribute uh, different you know, different people are good at different tasks etc um but anyway the idea of uh, of a right to life is something that you want to grant to others in the hopes that they'll grant it to you so we can continue working together to make a better life together if you don't respect the right to life uh, then someone might go ahead and take your life if if a bunch of people didn't respect the right to life then you'd be constantly on the defense from attackers we don't have that situation today it's not a dog dog eat dog world so to speak because humans have come to the conclusion that it makes more sense to cooperate and to uh to live together peacefully with people generally obviously there are psychopaths uh who don't believe in the right to life but the super and they generally have badges well uh that's (laughs) sometimes true but uh 
So not, a, not the, a lot of them have a sense of duty. So that's my, my one concern, example my, of rights, and then the other examples you were talking about government granting rights. Again, that's that's not true. No, no, uh, not rights. Government granting protection, uh, not rights at all. Um, that's what I meant. I, I want to know what other rights besides life and property do you consider to be legitimate? Because, like, even right and property um, should be balanced against each other. Like in a hypothetical world where there were there was one guy with a lot of things that people needed, and nobody else had that, and there was, let's say, 10 people in this world, and suddenly there was a famine and he had all the food, I think his right to property would at that point um, have to be balanced to their, with their right to life. So I think it would be legitimate to take some of his food uh, in order to perpetuate the life of other people. If what there are only 10 people left in the world, that I'm sure that those people can find food elsewhere other than <laughs> stealing from one man that has it. You're right. You have to go to some ridiculous, impossible scenario to even try to make the point that you're making here. Um, no, it's not okay to steal from people. It's not okay to kill that guy to take his food from him so you can continue living. Your right to life ends at the other people's rights, right? It ends at uh, violating those other people's rights. But again, not everybody agrees on what should be a right and what shouldn't be a right. And that's why I think rights are nothing more than agreement between humans. So not everybody agrees with the idea of property. Mm -hmm. uh, property is just an idea that has come up. It's convenient. It's a good idea. It helps define who has what and who has a right to uh, to what and who can op uh, who can operate what so greg let me ask you this question in your ideal world would there be some kind of computer that allocates things to people well first of all i don't think there is an ideal world and i'm not looking for one um but in a world uh i think that that we live in and, and one that could be better where we're going i think yeah computers will take over a lot of government do, do you support the but venus project uh i heard about it i i'm certainly for the sustainable uh i think capitalism should become sustainable we'll come back with more in moments free talk live a powerful weight loss supplement is being given out to listeners in this area on a strict first come first serve basis you must be between the ages of 25 and 65 and need to lose at least 30 pounds Please call now only if you qualify. 1-800-409-5432. This product can cause dramatic weight loss, so supplies are limited. It's called Final Trim. Take two capsules just once a day as directed, and you can experience maximum weight loss. Pounds in days. It uses natural ingredients, making it healthy and safe. If your weight loss with Final Trim is too dramatic, please decrease use and only take one capsule a day. Call now and you will be given a full-size supply of Final Trim to use absolutely risk-free. Repeat, Final Trim is being given out to listeners on a strict first-come, first-served basis. Supplies are limited. Call 1-800-409-5432. 1-800-409-5432. That toll-free number again is 1-800-409-5432. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. 
the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What are rights? Are they something given to you by a creator? Are they given to you by government? Or is it just a good idea between people that helps humans interact with one another? I think, I think the latter is, uh, is the case. I think that uh, rights are pretty valuable and that uh, it's taken time to figure out this whole rights thing. We may not have figured it all out completely yet. We'll continue with the discussion here. I'm uh, glad Greg brought it up. He's uh, still on the line with us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you'd like to uh, jump into the conversation also, there's our Skype username, which is lrn.fm. And, of course, you know your right to pursue happiness should be pretty much... Uh, unstoppable, so long as your right to pursue happiness doesn't infringe upon somebody else's right to life or whatever. So, obviously, if you uh, get happy by killing people, sorry, you don't have a right to pursue happiness in that way because it would uh, infringe on other people's rights. And uh, I want to tell you something about someone named Andrew Jones. He was trying to pursue happiness. He was living his life however he was living it. And then all of a sudden, the federal government came in and accused him of being one of the administrators of the Silk Road. Now, I don't know if Andrew Jones actually is one of the administrators of the Silk Road. They're alleging he was named Inigo on the Silk Road, the Silk Road being an underground drug marketplace that is available on tour. He's facing the rest of his life in prison, not because he violated anyone's rights, but because he violated some alleged rule, or they're alleging that he violated some rules that some men and women wrote down on paper uh, in the federal government. He's facing the rest of his life in prison. He's currently uh, holed up in his parents' house on a million-dollar bond. His parents have put up their retirement incomes in their home uh, to secure that bond, and he'll be staying on house arrest all the way through his trial, which is expected, I believe, to be later on this year. It's not going to be cheap for him to put on a defense. Drew is a Free State Project participant. He's a liberty-loving person. His girlfriend, his family, they're behind him. They support him on this, but they just they need help with uh, fundraising. So if you can help him out, please go to drewsdefense.org. By the way, he's also prohibited from getting on any device that could connect to the Internet. Uh, drewsdefense.org. You can help him with PayPal. You can use uh, Bitcoin as well. Drew's Defense. Dot org. As we continue here talking about rights with Greg in Brooklyn. And Greg, I think we may have somebody on the line here who wants to talk to you. We've got Justice uh, on the line sure. in Siberia. Justice, are you with us? Yes, sir. Here I am. Okay, I have you on with Greg in Brooklyn. Did you want to uh, converse with him? Well, actually, hey, I was, uh, yeah, sure. I was actually calling in kind of in response um, to a point he brought up, I think. Uh, last week about uh, force versus violence and it, and it kind of ties into the whole concept of rights and stuff so uh, uh just let me kind of give my my little sh- my little spiel and yeah, then just cool. hear what greg greg has to say back um you brought up a really good point the other day about 
um, how all property is, y your point was that all property is based in, in some kind of uh, violence, basically, like the uh, libertarian voluntarist position being that we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't, ha you know, uh, aggress and all that kind of stuff. And you were saying that all property is kind of based in violence. And I, I'd like to take issue with that and basically say that, no, I think that uh, mm -hmm. property fundamentally is, is, um, is not based in violence. Property, there's there's force involved in, in property. All property has is backed by the potential of force, but that that force doesn't equal violence. Violence in in its nature is the initiation of aggression. Um, and the difference between a system based on property rights and um, voluntary interaction, the difference between that and a system of forced redistribution is that the system of property rights and voluntary interaction can work without force. Um, just because I don't lock my door does not necessarily mean someone's going to walk in and walk away with my stuff. It might, but it doesn't mean. In a system of force distribution that you're um, pretty consistently propagating, um, if you stop the violence, if you stop the aggression of the state, the whole system comes undone. Um, I'm living in, you know, post post soviet russia and talking to the old timers here um the people who lived through the soviet period they they just they 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 sing the praises of the great soviet system and the, and the great and the soviet man and the and the and the wonderful utopia that it was but when the, the violence stopped things just went to hell um in the 90s i lived i lived here in russia through the entire 90s period and it was it was pretty incredibly terrible and the reason for that was because the entire system was based on violence um so that's that's the, that's the observation that i had there justice i want to thank yeah. you for the call tonight man uh, kind of an iffy connection from you on skype i appreciate it though thanks for sharing your thoughts with greg greg uh, response go ahead yeah no i understand him man uh first of all you know i'm from russia although i left when i was one year old so I, it's almost like the mirror image. I grew up uh, in New York. But, um, I mean, listen, first of all, the Soviet regime wasn't exactly socialism either. It was more of a totalitarian <laughs> regime. They called itself socialism. But regardless, um, I what think— What was it? Well, thing, but before you go on, okay, yeah. this is a common refrain from people who support socialism is that, oh, well, those other guys in the history <laughs> did it wrong. Can you name a, uh, a regime that was a socialist regime in the history of man? Well, for, first of all, I'm not in favor of socialism as you think of it. Um, and I'm no, not, you're in favor of it as you like, think of it. So I'm wondering what I, you would— For example, I think the stock market is, uh, is a form of socializing risk that is very good without any coercion whatsoever. I think it's superior to whatever Karl Marx had in mind. So, no, I'm not in favor of any kind of forced uh, uh, redistribution like that. But What I are you in favor about, of forcing, then? I'm not in favor. I'm saying that you can't get rid of force. And, uh, you know, the, the caller who just uh, brought well, this up— Well, of course up, you can't get rid of force. I mean, there will always be humans who are willing to use coercive force against other humans, that of which there's no doubt. I mean, that's going to continue. Even if we were to get rid of the coercion of the state, there would still be individuals who would be willing to use coercion against psychopaths and sociopaths, those yes, people. Yes, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the system, not the people. See, you're blaming, uh, you're saying there's a few bad apples. If these bad apples weren't using force, everything would be fine. I'm a developer of software, and I have a team. I've learned early on with the team that blaming a developer for, let's say, checking in code that doesn't compile is not a very good thing because you're relying on humans to constantly check everything. Instead, the system is at fault. Fix, you know, have the system check it automatically. So the same thing here. You're saying, and you know, a, a lot of the 99% blames the 1%, and there's a lot of blame all the time. But really, no system is perfect. There's always going to be force. And in fact, with the laissez-faire system, with the, with the property rights, there's force too, because property is excluding others by force, if necessary, from something, from some resources. That is what property is. It's a monopoly right. Do, do I have a right to, to climb into your bed whenever I want to? No. That's, see, that's the thing. When you start talking about rights, it becomes completely arbitrary. It, yours, you've decided that there, there are two rights, maybe three, life, property, and pursuit of happiness. Can you list any more? Well, I think 
everything falls under those, but you're saying that no one has a right to property. So I'm asking if I can just crawl in your bed because you don't have property no, because you can't protect your bed. Um, what I am saying is instead of talking about rights, talk about protections and how the organization can be set up to guarantee those protections to some extent. Now, as and long as it's set that, up on a consensual basis, it doesn't bother me. Thanks, Greg. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Imagine looking in the mirror and to your surprise, you look 10 years younger. How would it make you feel? Looking younger can be your reality with our breakthrough anti-aging formula that's clinically proven to visibly and dramatically improve wrinkles, lines and skin tone. Call 1-844-500-0815. That's 1-844-500-0815. Or visit imaginelookingyounger.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here about what you want. 
Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Coffee.freetalklive.com is where you can go to get a free pound of the best of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. BuzzBox, it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something special that other coffee producers aren't really interested in. Uh, interested in. They set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their co-op. Plus, we've teamed up with BuzzBox and Kiva, which is a microloans organization, to where every 10 listeners who signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com finances a new microloan given to somebody around the world and usually a tough uh, place to live uh, to create a business for themselves or take their business to the next level with a new investment. And once that loan is paid off, we're going to take that money back in and we're going to reloan it out. So that it'll just continue to get loaned out the more listeners sign up at coffee.freetalklive.com. The more loans we can have going simultaneously, uh, simultaneously. So it's very exciting. You just pay the shipping cost. You get your first pound for free. And then you can cancel your subscription at any time. But we suspect you won't want to cancel if you love good, uh, great coffee, that is. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Go and get started there with BuzzBox and help us uh, give some micro loans out through Kiva. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Live.com. I want to get back to the calls here in a moment, but also just a further comment on, I think, a, an important distinction that maybe Greg, our caller, who is missing. And I keep Greg on for a lot longer than the average caller because he's challenging. I mean, he's got uh, different ideas, ideas that are very uh, different from what we promote here on Free Talk Live, and, and I like a good challenge. Uh, but I think the thing he's missing when he talks about how property is based on force is that property is based on defensive force. So in that you have the right to defend your property from the encroachment. So you asked right. the question about, can I just crawl into your bed? Right, because he said that nobody has a right to own property. Is that what he said? He said no one has a right to property because property is based on force. I see. Well, uh, yeah, I think that uh, property is useful. And we talked about the reasons uh, that it is useful because having... This, these distinctions, having ownership over these things, helps to promote those things. When you own something, you're be, you're more likely to take care of it. You look at the commons, for instance, the tragedy of the commons, as it's called. Frequently, places that are public or commonly owned are just not taken care of very well. Right. Uh, they're, they're, and if you look at the poorest countries in the world... And you will notice that in a lot of those countries, people do not have a right to own property, mm. which means people don't have a right to develop property, which means that they don't have a right to make things better for themselves. They don't have as much of an interest in that property, so therefore they're more likely to just do nothing with it. Well, the countries or that I'm thinking it. of specifically, uh, a lot of the uh, sub-Saharan countries in Africa— where the people do not have a right to own property, so they'll set up these sort of tent towns, and then the government will just come in at random times and drive the people out. So they don't ever have the opportunity to develop to the put, property. To put down roots to improve things for the future. And so, again, it's based on force, but only defensive force. You right. shouldn't be taking property by force. That would be aggressive force to right. acquire property. But if somebody comes on your property and they're dangerous or they're polluting it or whatever, they're going to kidnap someone or whatever their, their motivations are to destroy what you have, you are fully within your rights to defend that. And there's nothing wrong with right. that. And I, I think a lot of people confuse libertarians with propertarians, mm. uh, propertarians being those people that say that property rights are the end all be all of human existence instead of you know the inherent right of you have an inherent right to life liberty and pursuit of happiness the propertarian would say you have a right to property and anything that you derive from property you have a right to keep but you don't necessarily have a right to live unless you can live on property that you own Let's go to John in Charleston, West Virginia, listening to WVTS. Hey, John. Hey, man. Uh, last time we was talking about secession. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I let out a couple of things here. Uh, we would need energy independence uh, and a competitive corporate tax code. Uh, right now, the corporate tax is pretty high, and 
I mean, last time we kind of got into it on international or the uh, the national, and I think our alliances with international uh, trade and uh, military support would help a lot. I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you saying the U.S. government and their alliances? Because I don't have any alliances internationally. Well, I mean, internationally, uh, right now, uh, I think the president is basically a Muslim. What does that have to do with anything? Well, ISIS, uh, Christians, Jews, a lot of people's uh, beliefs and... uh, I think Jews are kind of afraid of ISIS right now. I am really confused at uh, at your point. What is it you're trying to say? Well, I mean, it's it's more than... uh, If you look at the Greek Euro, uh, Greece has been bankrupt. And I think that's got a lot to do with the reason Scotland... Uh, ended up voting no in their uh, Scottish election <laughs> to separate from Britain. The Greek euro? There's no such the, the, thing the, as the, a Greek euro. Yeah, the Greeks don't have their own euro. Uh, the Greeks had a lot of national <laughs> debt. The, the Greek just, government had yeah. a lot of national debt. Are you just dropping buzzwords and names and trying to sound coherent? Because I'm completely flummoxed. I, I'm confused about what any of this has to do with secession and what does international alliances have to do with a state seceding from the U.S. government? I think he's saying he wants to stay in the union. You're, you're saying you don't support secession, right? Well, I'm I'm, I'm saying I do, but I, do. I mean I think that we don't have leadership we. anywhere. Who's we? Who? Right now Wh- which state are you talking about? You, when you say we, anything. just to be clear, John, anything. when you say we don't have the leadership. Do you mean the people in West Virginia don't have leadership? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean anybody in any state does not have the leadership or the organized uh, support behind a, a leader. I mean, we have absolutely no leaders in America right now that anybody knows of. What? What? Uh, first of all, there are countless leaders. Uh, there are various different people leading businesses, leading They're activist groups. People, people lead Nobody their own churches. People lead in a lot of different ways. So uh, when you say leader, I don't necessarily want a leader. If you want a leader, you can have the leaders you want. You can have them tell you what to do. But I'm not interested in having someone lead me anywhere. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, a republic is about a representative who is elected by the people, a democracy, you know, to lead and to represent them. And, mm-hmm. you know, most Americans right now don't feel like they're being represented in office, especially by Obama. And, you know, that. I I also didn't feel like I was being represented when George Bush was president or when Bill Clinton was president or when George H.W. Bush was president. And I didn't really know enough when Reagan was in. I don't know about you, John, but when I vote, it's not because I'm voting for a leader. It's because I'm usually voting for the lesser of two evils in the hopes that they will not, you know, not whip me and beat me and rob me as much as the other guy. I thank you for the call tonight. Very confusing. The the whole thing about, you know, we're a republic, so people are supposed to represent us. I am not a republic. Well, there are a bunch of countries that have the word republic in their name. Uh, Democratic Cuba, Republic of North Korea? Cuba is just simply the Republic of Cuba. Mm. I don't think that Fidel Castro or his little brother represent too many people in Cuba. Raul. Raul Castro. Yeah. I, I don't think they're representing a lot of people. No. The Bolivarian the- Republic of Venezuela, I don't think that they're representative of too many people down there either. People's Republic of China. The Democratic People's Republic. Republic of Korea. And you may take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. I do not want to be your leader, and I don't want you to tell me what to do, and we can get along if that's the case. I'm not interested in politicians leading me anywhere. They're dangerous, and they have terrible ideas. Who would follow these people? It's Free Talk Live. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business. 
project, website, or idea, email me, mark, at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Whey and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Whey, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Whey, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100-degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Whey and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Way comes in single servings. Just give it a try. One World Way is derived from Amish, grass-pastured cows and is newly reformulated to be higher in protein. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll free here. Take control of the airwaves. You don't have to make sense to get on the air here on Free Talk Live. We will. Do our best to discern what it is the hell that you're talking about. But you will stay on longer if you do make sense. It's true. Sometimes. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There are no guarantees here on Free Talk Live, but we will take your calls about what you want. And you can reach us through Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You know, I said earlier, Daryl, that there was a story about the Americans and uh, Americans' inability to name the three branches of government. We haven't gotten to those numbers yet. 
We'll share them with you here in a moment. Also want to let you know that coming up in just over a month, it's going to be Keenvention 2014. It's the second year for Keenvention, and uh, we're going to do it again, and hopefully we'll pull it off again. Uh, the first year was way better than I expected it to be. I didn't know how many people were going to show up the first year, and turns out there were about 100 that uh, that were there at Keenvention. A little bit more, actually, about 115, 120 people. This year, it looks like we're on target for about the same amount of people, I would say. It's hard to really say because all you can really do is look at last year's numbers and compare and see if you're like right about the same or a little right. bit higher. And, of course, as you get closer to the event, the ticket sales tend to increase in their frequency. So I'm hoping that we're going to be about the same place. It's an intimate event where you can come to New Hampshire connect with other activists, people who love the ideas of freedom, who are doers. These are the activists. These are the people with the boots on the ground. Uh, and there are also some pretty bright folks as well. So we're going to cover some interesting topics. Some new ground will be covered this year at Keenvention. we got the new Cop Block panel, uh, the new Movers panel. Last year we had old school movers, so people kind of reflecting on having been here for quite a while. This year we'll have total noobs up on one of the panels, and uh, we'll get there. What defines a new mover? I'm saying within the last year. Last year. So somebody okay. within the last so Movers from within the last year. So those are a couple of the new panels. Some of the old panels that we had from the first year are coming back, but with different people involved in uh, running the panels and things like that. Um, you're going to be doing some of your raffles this yes. year? Yes. Uh, I need to work on putting that together. I know. It's uh, crunch time. Here. I, I know for a fact that I will have some chain mail Ooh. to raffle. What kind of chain mail? Bracelets. Ah, okay. Very cool. I had a, an old roommate who would make full on, like, chest level chain mail. Like, it would go around your whole Ooh. trunk. It was pretty hardcore. And uh, so that's happening. It's happening October 31st through November 2nd. It's going to be a lot of fun. And plus, extra fun now because Derek J is going to be throwing a Halloween costume party which I'm excited about. We did not have that last year. Uh, so the first night of Keenvention is October 31st, so we're going to have a costume party, and that's going to be a blast at the the hotel. Uh, we're going to do bowling and karaoke on the, the Saturday night as well. And, and I think somebody is putting together a bonfire for Sunday. Ooh, yeah. So one of the things I like about Keenvention is I don't have to figure it all out. Right, like I create the uh, the ideas for the panels. I take suggestions from people as to what they want to see on the panels, and then basically what I'll do is I'll select who the panel hosts are, and then the panel hosts just decide everything. So if you're hosting a panel at Keenvention, you figure out who the panelists are. You figure out what the topics are. I'm not gonna, I don't want to micromanage. And then other people just sort of come up with ideas, like the raffle. That was your idea. You just yeah. came to me and said, "Hey, can I do this? Yeah, please do that." Um, and then Derek and um, and uh, Danica, a couple of the activists in the area here, they want to do the party thing i'm like great do that <laughs> let's do it do it uh so yeah so come on out and if you've never been to new hampshire before this is a great excuse to come up and check it out here and meet some of the the, the very names and the people that you hear about so often on free talk live uh, and it's also a great excuse to come and, and be here during the fall it's just after leaf peeping season so it's not that it's not the peak best best time of the year to come but if if we were to hold it during leaf peeping season it cost a lot more to uh, to get the hotel rooms like the difference in hotel room price between leaf peeping season and the week that we have convention is like $250 a night down to 80 bucks a night. Okay, so for the people that don't live in the New England area, what exactly is leaf peeping season? <laughs> Thank you for asking. That's where people come to New Hampshire and New England in general to look at the leaves. That is what they do. You can't look at leaves in North Carolina, apparently. Do they look as pretty in North Carolina? With, they mean, still change color. Do they? What they? difference does it make? They go from green to not green. But are they as pretty when they change color in North Carolina? I don't know. I've never lived anywhere but Florida and they New Hampshire. They go from green to not green. But do, And then between, they fall off. But wait, in between going from green to not green, do they go to bright orange and bright They're red? They're all and kinds yellow? of colors. Okay, so what you're saying is, is that... There's nothing special about New Hampshire leaves. So why the hell do people come here to go leaf peeping then? I have no clue. <laughs> that's why I don't understand it. I don't know, man, but uh, that's why the hotels are a lot more expensive in October and uh, in Maybe September. Maybe they come up here because of maple syrup. Yeah, but that's in the wintertime when they're tapping the Then I'm syrup. out of ideas. All I know is everywhere I've ever lived, except for Arizona... 
the leaves went from green to not green. They were all kind of different colors. Interesting. Well, anyway, my point being... And then they fell off. Keenvention is not during the leaf peeping season. It's the week after because you save a lot more on hotel rooms. And I wanted Keenvention to be an affordable convention. I wanted you to be able to look at the price of Keenvention, 60 bucks for the entire weekend, and say, wow, there's no reason to not go to this. It's so affordable. So go to Keenvention.info, grab your tickets there. Bitcoin, you can buy them with Bitcoin as well. And we'll look forward to seeing you October 31st through November 2nd in Keen at Keenvention.info. So, Daryl, the story from WashingtonPost.com, Wednesday marked... National Constitution Day, the 227th anniversary of the signing of the U.S. Constitution, but only 36% of Americans can actually name the three branches of government that the Constitution created. The Republicans, the Democrats, and the corporations. A good guess, but no. And The just Army, joking. the <laughs> Navy... And the New York Times. It would be interesting to hear uh, people's responses to this. Uh, that's according to a new survey from the Annenberg Public Policy Center. It shows a huge percentage of Americans might need to take a civics refresher course. Now, look, I didn't learn a whole lot in government school, but this is one of the things that they did teach. I mean, because in government yeah. school... They do teach you about the government to some extent, some basic level. They claim, oh, there's checks and balances, and that's why we have these three branches of government. My senior year of high school, one semester of the social studies period was U.S. government. The right. other semester of that period that too. was economics. I had the exact same thing uh, down when I was going to school in Florida. 38% of Americans knew the Republic, uh, Republican Party controls the U.S. House of Representatives, while 17% think Democrats are still in charge. Honestly, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known that and one. And th this is one of the things, because remember, we were talking about this briefly before the show, mm -hmm. and I said— this first question is really interesting, and then there's a couple of questions where it really doesn't matter. Right. Who cares because who it doesn't that? matter if it's no. red team fascist or blue team fascist that are in charge. But one party's in charge of the House, one party's in charge of the Senate, just happens to be red team fascist in charge of the House, blue team fascist in charge of the Senate. But the thing that really piqued my interest was towards the end of this story. Okay where it says that groups like Civics Education Initiative are pushing to include more civics education in high school by requiring students pass the U.S. citizenship test before being allowed to graduate high school. Well, what do you think about that? I think it's rather interesting. I, I don't like the idea of you know some kind of mandate that's of any sort. If you couldn't pass the citizenship test ever, would that mean you'd be stuck in high school until you were 65? Would that mean that you're not a citizen? Would that mean that you are then not to be forced to pay taxes? I doubt it. I'm sure they'd still want to tax you. Right. But, yeah. you know, they, 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 they would do this weird thing of, well, no, you're an American citizen, but I failed the citizenship test. You just can't have a diploma. as though That's worth anything anyway. Right. Now, one thing that I do remember from my senior year of high school, the first day in American government class, the teacher passed out this quiz. She said, it's a pop quiz just to see where everybody stands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seems kind of normal for a teacher sure. to, you know, want to figure out where everybody is. And so we took it and, she, you know, like pass it to the person to your left or right or whatever it yep. was and scored, give it back. And then she said, everybody that got over a 75, raise your hand. About half of the class raised their hands. Mm -hmm. She said, if you got below this score, raise your hand. And, you know, it's about half got below uh, a, a failing mark on the quiz. And she said, that was the U.S. citizenship test. <laughs> half of you just failed. <laughs> How'd you do? I passed with flying colors. I don't think I got a wrong answer. And but it, it was just one of those things of, you know, like people in high school a lot of times can't pass basic stuff like how many stars are on the flag? How many uh, colonies seceded from England? By the way, in case you were wondering, the three branches of government are judicial, executive, and legislative. Yes. There you go. We'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com, Daryl's website, fpp.cc. Are you?
Uh, thank you, George. I appreciate you <laughs> taking up this issue. Fair talk, if a man ain't cooked crisp on the hellfire desert, and he ought to be left on his own. Well, right, Joe. Immigrants are desperate for a better way of life. We Get... need the strongest of these crude backward browns to keep us all alive. I see the ones that can swim the Rio Grande, too. Berto, you swum that border river to get here, ain't you? Joe, not all Mexicans came here by swimming the Rio Grande. No, 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 no. I got sympathy. I crossed Huron Lake in the barrel myself using hands as paddles, lived off the carp, what jumped at me. Now, you swam that river, no, ain't you? No, actually, I was born here. What you know about hard work? Ain't never swum no river. Many immigrants, they I say you ain't never know the man till you seen his teeth. Show him your teeth. Too many teeth rotting out shows you're dishonest in the mind. You got strong man full of teeth, Bartol. I apologize. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.43 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $391. Antiwar.com reports, in a 78-22 to 22 vote yesterday, the Senate passed the same bill the House of Representatives passed on Wednesday, approving the Obama administration's plan to train and arm a new faction of some 5,000 vetted and moderate Syrian rebels. The plan is to recruit various existing Syrian rebels to go off and train as a new force, fitting the U.S. ideal of a moderate rebel faction to back, and then, in a year, send them back to Syria to fight the Islamic State. Despite considerable retinence about the plan, apparent during Secretary of State John Kerry's testimony to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the vote was not particularly close. The vote is expected to be the only war-related vote the Senate will address before November elections, with senators very keen to delay any broad resolution on the war itself until after the election. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy offered the same assessment in his own comments earlier this week, saying that there would likely be some sort of debate about about an authorization of use of military force sometime after November. The Obama administration insists they don't need any authorization for the war at all, and by the end of November, the war is going to be extremely entrenched and difficult to roll back. Many members of Congress likely to vote for the war fear a backlash from voters if they do, and so they are waiting for the post-election period and hope that the votes won't be a political issue. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports, Canada, one of the harshest critics of 